one of the most beloved songs of uh, finger pickers' lives. This is one of the first finger picking songs I learned, and I hear it's taken me this many years to get around to finally doing a lesson on it. And part of it is be inspired by my friend Dave Nachmanoff and his uh, his song Kindred Spirits, which we may talk about later. Um, but yeah, this was one of the first tunes I learned. It's a simple alternating bass song. Of course, Elizabeth Cotton, born in the 1890s, uh, played a little bit as a young girl, kind of gave up the guitar, went on for 20 or 30 years, and then was discovered playing the guitar in the Seeger household, Mike Seeger and his siblings, um, and kind of brought her back into prominence. He, Mike got out his little little reel-to-reel -reel recorder in 1958, recorded her playing some songs, including Freight Train, and that album is uh, available on a CD now. I really encourage you to pick it, pick it up, uh, Freight Train and other North Carolina folk songs. And... Um, but this is a, a, an example of a song that is just uh, a pretty simple little melody, and we're going to talk about a few different approaches to, to doing this. Just understanding the chord progression is half of it, being able to play the melody, and then really kind of putting it together on your own. It doesn't have to go any particular way. Um, we will look at, I have uh, music that I wrote out to the pretty much the way she played it the first time through on that recording, and we may talk about other people's versions, um, but maybe not just yet. Um, now, Elizabeth Cotton had some a really unusual style of playing that is now known as cotton picking, and this is because she was left-handed, picked up a guitar, actually a banjo, I think, in the early days that was laying around the house belonging to her brother, and just played it the wrong way. Now, not too big a deal, necessarily, but she still developed this style of playing on her own using a thumb and one finger to, and I've got a thumb pick on here today to, to get especially extra volume of, of the bass notes, but she played using her index finger to play the bass notes and her thumb to play the melody notes because the strings on her guitar were reversed. So the high, the high E was here and the low E was here. So she would keep her thumb going back and forth between maybe the sixth and the, and the third string. Sixth and fourth strings. And that was her beat. She would keep her other three fingers anchored here just had her finger doing what my thumb would usually be doing, and that would be the beats. And then we use your thumb to play the melody notes that would sometimes be, maybe, you know what, I'm going to have to get a left-handed guitar and give this a try, but that's not on today's agenda. Um, so we're going to use, I'm going to use more fingers, but you could do this with your thumb and one finger. Your thumb will play the bass notes, alternating back and forth, typically on the C chord. She played, <coughs> excuse me, played G in the bass. We'll talk about the chord progression and the melody coming up in the next segment, but just give, wanted to give you a little heads up on the uh, the technique that Elizabeth Cotton used, and it worked for her. I don't recommend trying this at home, but uh, who knows? It will sound pretty close to the same with just reversing those digits, having your thumb play the bass notes and your index finger or multiple fingers playing the melody notes. She would use her thumb to play multiple strings in the melody because a lot of lot of pickers in those days did only really use thumb and one finger. Blind Blake, Reverend Gary Davis. So they adapted that style. Anyway, coming up in the next segment we will talk about make sure you have the melody figured out kind of by ear and the chords and first have you try to put it together and see what you can come up with before you even look at the tablature. That's what I'm going to encourage is try to build your own freight train. So that's what we're going to tackle in this lesson on Elizabeth Cotton's classic freight train. Well, she plays some of the, um, the chords. Mostly she plays her C chords with G in the bass. And so what we're going to do in this segment is put together the bass notes and the simple melody where all the melody notes are played on beats, no syncopation. So um, play a C chord, regular C down here, put G in the bass, and that's how we're going to play some of these Cs. Later on, we're going to be alternating back and forth between, between C and G in, on, in the bass on the third and fourth beats occasionally. But all of the C chords that I have listed in the, uh, on the melody sheet are played, we're going to play with G in the bass. So that means that for the first two measures, the, the bass is going to be this. Six and four. In the next two measures, it's going to change to a G chord, so all you really have to do is take off those two fingers of the C chord. And we're going to stay with that in the third, in the, in the second line, staying with just G for two measures, and back to C, but keeping G in the bass. Now to an E chord. Now 
Now, really important on the E's, a great way to play them is by leaving your second finger where it was on C and only use your first finger. Don't play a whole E chord. Don't waste a finger on the fifth string that you're not going to play anyway. So play the E with just your first finger on G sharp and your second finger on the E, and that will be the bass now for our E chord. And we'll add in a D in the melody a little bit later on.